Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah rahman rahim dear viewers, welcome back to the new show, Development Dialogue Show. You know that we are all busy for the last few weeks from the transition from Millennium Development Goals set by the United Nations in 2000, to coming to this Sustainable Development Talk, development, Sustainable Developmental Goals of the United Nations, which will start from 2015 and ends at 2030. Very ambitious goals, 17 goals set to ensure that the global poverty can be eliminated, can be fought back. The appalling disaster that we have seen in terms of the loss of life due to lack of medical facilities or access to medical care, access to clean water, the loss of human lives. The world community cannot tolerate this inequality. We are together to fight global poverty. Today we will be discussing with the two prominent Muslim leaders coming from all the way from Republic of Kenya. And we will be talking to them, to these leaders, what do they believe, how they are going to tackle global poverty in general, in particular in the Republic of Kenya. Kenya has recently gone through a political difficulties because of the uh, unfortunate effect of the instability of the within the region but nevertheless the country demonstrated resilience and sound leadership having the son of the father of the nation Uhuru Kenyatta being elected as the president so first of all uh, let me introduce and welcome uh, brother governor Nathif Adam the governor of the Garissa county and my very good brother governor Isa Timami from the uh, county uh, Lamu in, um, in uh, Kenya. Welcome brothers. Um, these two counties, there are 47 counties in Kenya, um, which is a federated arrangement, uh, the decentralization of the government has taken place. But there are approximately eight counties which are the Muslim majority provinces. So first of all, brother, Governor Nathif, if you can let, tell us about uh, the background of Garissa, where it is f uh, located geographically and what are the general conditions before you can go and address the main issues. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Brother Saif. Uh, and let me first of all take this opportunity to thank you uh, and thank the team of Igra TV station for giving us this opportunity uh, to share uh, issues relating to our counties uh, with the community in London and the viewers who are watching us tonight. Garissa County is one of, as you said rightly, one of the 47 uh, counties which came into being uh, after the promulgation of the Kenya 2010 uh, constitution. Garissa, um, uh, prior to that promulgation, was the headquarters of what used to be known as the Northeastern Province of Kenya, uh, which comprised of uh, Garissa, Wajir, and uh, Mandela districts. Uh, but uh, following the promulgation, each of those districts became uh, a county by itself. So Garissa, which used to be the headquarters of that province, is now a county of its own. We are um, a county also which uh, uh, shares a border with uh, my brother Isa's uh, county of Lamu, and uh, also um, we share also uh, the Tana River, which is the longest river in Kenya, with the other county known as Tana River County. Um, so um, in terms of our location, we are of course in that northern uh, part of, northeastern part of the county, of, of Kenya for that matter. Uh, on our um, eastern side, of course, we have the Somalia, the country of Somalia, uh, where we share the border. And um, as I said, um, uh, about 400, uh, sorry, 360 <coughs> kilometers from Nairobi, uh, which is about four hours drive. Uh, topography, um, I think, we, we is, is, is uh, good to say we are more of a semi arid county, even though also we have got pockets. Um, which are also very, very rich in terms of rain, 
in terms of uh, vegetation and in terms of uh, uh, basically um, uh, even in terms of agricultural production uh, including the river Tana which is which actually our county incidentally shares uh, the longest border with. Other than that I think what is worth mentioning in this introductory statement is that the county also um, has a large uh, livestock population and therefore uh, one of the biggest richnesses is that uh, we boast as uh, one of the counties which supplies the largest livestock. Meat, livestock and meat requirement to the Kenyan market. Thank you, thank you, uh, Governor uh, Nasif. Nasif, my uh, pronunciation has to be correct. Uh, Governor Issa, tell us about uh, County Lamu uh, for our viewers to understand where it is located. What are their main features of the of your territory? Uh, thank you. Uh, first, let me greet the viewers. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am the governor of Lamu County, and as my colleague stated, uh, there are 47 counties in Kenya, and Lamu is one of them. Uh, Lamu is uh, on the coastline of Kenya. Uh, it is about uh, 6,800 square kilometers, and uh, it is peculiar in that uh, we have an archipelago of islands and also a large swath of mainland Kenya. Lamu Town, which uh, is the headquarters of Lamu County, is on, uh, on an island. And there are about um, eight other islands uh, together forming the archipelago. And um, one important feature of Lamu is the fact that uh, Lamu Town itself is listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. It is uh, uh, one of the oldest settlements in Kenya, uh, dating back uh, to the 13th century. So Lamu has a very, very uh, long history. Apart from that, we are also very active uh, in agriculture. And uh, being on the coast, uh, we also have uh, uh, a lot of fishing. And the other mainstay is tourism. Uh, being a World Heritage Site and um, I am pleased to note that when President Obama visited Kenya and when he was asked which uh, sites he would have liked to visit, uh, he mentioned Lamu as one of the sites that uh, he would really love to have visited. Um, apart from that, um, from tourism and, uh, and fishing and, ag and agriculture, uh, we also have uh, a very also competitive um, livestock uh, sector, uh, not at the magnitude of uh, Garissa County, uh, but also by Kenyan standards, uh, quite a decent uh, uh, sector now. And um, apart from all that, we have a major government project uh, coming into Lamu. This is the development of um, the second major port in Kenya, and also. Um, a corridor that is going to be developed to link Lamu uh, with uh, Southern Sudan and Ethiopia. Uh, so, so I think we can see the potentials of both the counties, mm -hmm. enormous, but yet we are confronted with some hard facts. So what I would like to find out from you uh, in terms of various uh, United Nations strategic goals, that um, uh, where are you at this stage? and what measures you are taking and what as a development agency al Khair foundation which which is active in kenya that would like to forge a closer partnership in order to address some of those issues the first matter that comes to me is the healthcare i mean healthcare indicators saying that uh, there is a high level of maternal and infant mortality in both the counties and garissa's i mean statistics is unfortunately quite severe as that um, around 36.7 percent was the so the health facilities said no birth delivered at a health this uh, health facility in 2014 was 36.7 percent has been delivered in a health facility so that means approximately 63 percent of the birth taking place are in a non safe environment and this number 
is slightly better in Lamu around uh, this 43 percent that has been delivered in a health facilities, safe facilities and others are not. The Garissa rank according to the United States Nations statistics is rank 9 in uh, maternal mortality uh, on the top location of 9th and Lamu ranked the 7th. Lamu's death is 676, so you are worse in terms of uh, maternal death. So can, can you highlight to me what are the main reasons for it and what can be done to avert this? What international development agency can do? What your government is doing? And what can we really address this severe uh, sort of death in both the counties? The governor... Uh, yeah, I think um, some st statistics there may actually may need to be revised since um, uh, devolution has taken real ground in our counties. Um, uh, but just as a quick response, um, it's true that uh, our counties have uh, had uh, problems uh, with regard to child uh, mortality and maternal deaths for that matter. Um, and this is um, as a result of uh, previous um, or past uh, weaknesses in terms of attention to that particular sector of healthcare. It's tr uh, true that um, the, the case of Garissa, for instance, is a very, very wide county, uh, close to 46,000 um, uh, square kilometers of, uh, um, of, uh, of landmass. Of, of land so uh, with the biggest chunk of the population of the county living in the rural parts of the county and with a lot of um, uh, lack of proper attention in the past, um, we have had uh, um, incidents or these issues of maternal and child deaths um, occurring, uh, giving us that, that, that situation scenario. A poor infrastructure. Um, yes, largely uh, poor infrastructure and also lack of the healthcare facilities. But I, I, I can tell you that um, uh, we are doing a lot since devolution and indeed one of the reasons uh, or some of the reasons why the whole concept of devolution, the whole idea of uh, devolving services to the counties uh, was enacted in the constitution is because of these particular problems that um, uh, some counties do not, uh, some places in the country are not being served well. Hence the constitution that Kenyans, um, you know, opted for uh, right. and, and went into a referendum for. Okay. Um, so um, with the devolution now, I have no doubt that uh, these numbers will change. And I'm, I'm optimistic that um, these uh, figures uh, will indeed come down. If, in fact, in Garissa, the the, these numbers have already started coming down uh, very, very uh, quickly. Uh, this is because um, even though we do not yet have a lot of good roads, but what we have done is that over the last two years, we have increased the number um, of, of, of healthcare facilities uh, in the rural parts of the country. For instance, we have managed to build about 46 dispensaries so far in the rural parts of the county to the extent that every ward now has a minimum of one uh, healthcare facility. Add to that the fact that we have now been able to supply a lot of um, ambulances uh, to those um, uh, healthcare facilities and to the villages in the rural parts of the county. And uh, therefore, um, the, together with the so um, uh, facilities yeah. and the ambulances, uh, you know, people are now uh, being able to take in or to the, to the to delivery centers. And I'm op optimistic that these numbers will come down. But nevertheless, as I've said, this is an accumulation of many years of um, neglect. neglect and many years of uh, lack of uh, um, you know, facilities and therefore uh, you will, uh, you know, these numbers may, may, be, may be worrying. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, um, you know, we are also open to, to uh, working with institutions like Al Khair for that matter. Uh, we, are op we, we already have a lot of uh, uh, other institutions, UN institutions, um, many other, you know, other institutions of NGOs who are all uh, interested 
uh, in working with these counties, particularly uh, with now the county governments that are in place. Excellent. It's a right. Uh, first on my side, uh, uh, let me say that um, the 15 uh, counties in Kenya, uh, which have a very high maternal and infant mortality, we have signed actually a memorandum uh, with various uh, agencies, including um, the Ministry of Health of Kenya, uh, UNFPA, the World Bank, the Red Cross, and uh, this was facilitated by our First Lady uh, of the Republic, uh, Mrs. Uh, Margaret Kenyatta. And uh, all this came, came about because of the concerns that we all had uh, regarding uh, this situation. I also agree with my colleague that um, the statistics then and two years now down the line uh, with devolution, uh, we're already seeing uh, a lot of progress. It is uh, work in progress still. And for Lamu, uh, one of our major challenges is the geography of the area. As I mentioned that we have all these islands which are inhabited and um, uh, in some of the islands we don't have uh, proper medical facilities. So if a lady develops a complication, she has to be put in a boat and brought to the main hospital in Lamu. The time is longer. And in the process, uh, we, we, we lose uh, yes. mothers and infants. Yes, absolutely. But um, uh, we are uh, doing the best we can. Already this year, we are programming uh, to do up some, uh, one of the, on one of the islands, a, a big hospital uh, to revamp the operating theater there and the delivery rooms so that um, we reduce the requirement that these ladies have to be ferried into Lamu Island. But uh, all in all, as I mentioned, it is work in progress and uh, we will welcome uh, organizations like Al Khair uh, to come in and um, partner with us uh, to make sure that uh, we don't unnecessarily lose lives of, uh, of women and infants. I think um, one of the things that has happened recently um, is that the, uh, your First Lady, Kenyan First Lady, Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta launched the Beyond Zero campaign of providing mobile health clinics in the remote part. It's a very commendable initiative. I think Al Khair feels uh, that uh, in uh, solidarity with this campaign and we are very keen to work with the First Lady and along with you to ensure that the maternal death, which is currently lying approximately 50% of the deaths taking place in Kenya are when the women deliver birth. And you are absolutely right, Governor, that the time from the place to take it over to the safe uh, delivery center is the longest time. And no wonder why the women are dying in the process. So taking the healthcare facilities straight to the people is one of the key component of that. Uh, but in terms of any measures, or any uh, program do you have currently where organizations like us can come along and work with you, particularly to boost up the First Ladies initiative? I, I think um, <coughs> you're right, um, um, Mr. Saif. Uh, uh, the First Lady has indeed uh, come out, uh, uh, you know, very exemplary and uh, Indeed, with a very, very innovative um, program. Um, the theme itself, uh, when we look at it, you know, as my, my colleague Governor Issa has said, uh, we, we, we signed the 15 counties uh, actually um, uh, working very close with, with, the, with the First Lady and with her zero, um, uh, beyond, zero. beyond Zero campaign uh, together with the UNFPA. Uh, the theme itself of her campaign uh, is really very striking when she says that mothers should not die when giving life. Beautiful. You know, very beautiful and catchy. Uh, we work very close with uh, her and uh, her team. Uh, she's been going around the counties to see any ways of working uh, with those counties and supporting them. But uh, yes, um, uh, and obviously, we, you know, uh, many institutions uh, 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 have been coming on to support that program. Many are interested. Al Khair, I think, will be welcome, I have no doubt, uh, to, to come on board uh, and uh, 
we look forward to that. But the, the reality is that uh, uh, we, as uh, counties in that part of, of Kenya, uh, and in those circumstances, we also um, have indeed um, given uh, priority and the biggest chunk of our attention and budget to the key um, you know, uh, areas of healthcare, uh, water, uh, education. Th these are the areas that also ourselves we are paying a lot of attention. And indeed, we also keep seeking any partners and, and friends who can join us in that regard, yes. Well, on, 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 uh, on my side, I agree with what Governor Nadif has uh, stated. Uh, just to uh, enlighten you, uh, in our 2015-2016 budget, uh, Lamu County, we have allocated 38% of our budget to health. And uh, the measures that we're already putting in place is um, uh, revamping the health facilities, ensuring that we have enough staff uh, this has always been a challenge uh, because our two counties are in a remote part of Kenya and to get qualified people to come and serve in our counties has always been a challenge. And um, apart from that, we are trying to strengthen our boat ambulances because in Lamu we need both boat ambulances and vehicle ambulances. And uh, as we speak now, we have acquired one boat ambulance and we are planning and hoping that... Uh, How much it costs a boat uh, About Kenya shillings, about eight, eight million, eight million shillings. So if I can just connect the viewers. Viewers, you see there are two talented Muslim leaders emerging from Eastern Africa. They are indeed role models. They have got the responsibility to govern their counties or their provinces only two years. And you can see I have witnessed the transformation that is taking place. So I think I will ask two pertinent questions to two governors and you have got only one minute to answer each one of them for the viewers. How and what way the Muslim community in Britain in particular and in general the European Muslim communities can do to achieve your objectives on the health sector only today because you cannot go and deal with other issues. We are very much committed to Beyond Zero campaign. How can we work together? This one issue. But to the Muslim community, what is your message to combat health inequalities? First, Governor well, I, I think um, really to, uh, to, to, to all the viewers, um, uh, our message is uh, Kenya is, uh, has opened up. Kenya means business now. All counties, the 47 counties, are. Uh, uh, all now um, on track for real uh, change um, and indeed we see a great future for our country. Um, there are many, many people in the world now um, who are looking to, to this huge opportunity coming up in the country, uh, who are coming to witness what's happening in the country. The recent visit of uh, President Obama itself was, uh, um, you know, is, 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 it was in the right direction. And we, 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 we invite people, uh, we invite people um, to, to come, um, see our counties, uh, see how they can work with us, give us whatever support they can give in terms of, um, if it is doctors, for instance, in the healthcare sector, we have been having visits from uh, people, for instance, who came to do, uh, you know, health, health days or, op, op, uh, you know, Mobile uh, clinics, uh, medical mobile, camps, uh, you know, uh, uh, surgeries, uh, also. surgeries. Well, and this is qu quite uh, something that we have been seeing, and we welcome those initiatives. Thank you. Um, institutions such as Al Khair may uh, may want to also do some, you know, camps or, uh, or support uh, in any way possible. But yes, we well, and and uh, uh, it's really um, something that is taking shape as uh, different institutions now come and see what's happening and uh, indeed partake in the many development activities and scenarios that are taking shape in the, in the different counties in the country. Right. Your message. Um, my message first, uh, the world has become really a village where um, whatever happens in any part of the world, uh, everyone else gets to know. Kenya has indeed changed <clears throat> following the adoption of the new constitution 2010. And um, we have a challenge. Uh, there is no doubt about that. 
And uh, our appeal is an appeal to all people of goodwill uh, that um, uh, together we can make a difference. Together we can save lives and together we can make the world a much better place. Yes, Apart from that, we say for those, uh, if we have doctors uh, in, in, in UK who would like to come and, uh, and help us, uh, we can organize medical camps. They come uh, specialists to do uh, some, some surgeries and other, and other medical um, uh, services. Uh, apart from all that, both Garissa and Lamu are very, very beautiful counties. Uh, they would, I believe they would enjoy uh, just to come and uh, do some health work and also uh, enjoy uh, beautiful Lamu and, and Garissa. Thank you, the governors. Dear viewers, very interesting. Great opportunities. We cannot let these two counties do not achieve their objectives. They are keen, determined leaders. They have given you opportunities two areas. You can volunteer if you are medical students or finished your degrees. You want to spend one year in the way of Allah to help humanity save lives. Very important. Saving one life is if saving the whole of humanity. Great opportunity. We can provide, we can raise funds to provide our brothers to have boat ambulances. Why not you can, we can organize 10 boat ambulances? Garissa is a landlocked uh, province. We can provide ambulances there. The First Lady's Beyond Zero campaign, we should come and team up with her and her people and these two governors. So opportunities are there for you to come forward. And we will discuss more, inshallah, in the next episodes, the next uh, programs. Today, we concentrated on the health inequalities, particularly in two counties, Muslim majority counties in Kenya. Let us work together to make them an exemplary counties that we achieve the sustainable development goals with regard to the maternal health and infant health within the next five to ten years, not to wait for others to show better results. We have to achieve earlier, inshallah. With that, I conclude today to look forward to see you again in the next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.